Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting Trains and today I am absolutely delighted to share with you a closer look at my first ever completed diorama, this little churchyard in the background. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and take a very close look at it. Okay then my friends, so just to begin with I want to point out that the left hand side slope has yet to be started here because I need to work on the layout itself to then have a transition coming from the base layout up the hill there. However, the churchyard and the right hand side, the bulk of this section basically that I have completed, well, you can see there's been an awful lot of work go on here, an awful lot of very small fiddly parts and an awful lot of trial and error, I'll say that much. So this really is my first attempt at this kind of scene. And I've got to say, I don't claim to be any kind of expert modeler or anything like that. But for my first attempt, I am really, really pleased with how this has come together and the amount of learning and education I have picked up along the way of doing this first section. I'm uh, very much looking forward to getting stuck into the next parts of the layout that I've got to work on. And also, even just the way that I filmed this build, I've learned an awful lot about what clips I need to film in the future. So hopefully you'll enjoy what I've got lined up here. So this is just an opening clip here to show you in depth and up close what this piece looks like. And well, we'll cut back in a minute to see how this has all come together over time. And I'll share a few insights and thoughts on the tremendous amount of trial and error and just sitting down with a huge amount of patience that it's taken to get this sorted. So you can see I've got some uh, deconstructed fake battery powered candles there which sits just inside the layout base there now so the church can sit on top of them and have these flashing lights in the windows again some people say it looks like the church is on fire it's meant to represent candle light of the flock inside going about their general worship so this is what we started with my friends this was a Metcalf church model that I'd put together last year and I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to start on the full churchyard scene as I really, to be honest, didn't know what I was going to do. So it took me about seven hours or maybe a little longer just to put the church together. And you can see all the pieces here that make up just the lich gate that's going to go on the uh, perimeter of the churchyard. So you can imagine just how many pieces went into that church. This is a, a good moment that's worth dwelling on here. That lich gate next to a pound coin because that helps to put into perspective the size of everything else on the layout. And amazingly, again, look at that notice board compared to the pound coin and then consider that even the tiny level, you can actually see bring them by and cake sale and read some of the words on those tiny little notices there. And again, as we zoom that back out, uh, it's a good indicator, as I say, of the overall size of some of these pieces. So this was me just having the flat uh, layout top there, just testing out how big did I want the churchyard to be? What could I realistically get in the churchyard? Were there going to be trees dotted around within the perimeter of the walls or not? And I was originally planning on building it up on a clay base. But then, as I realised that was going to be a little trickier than I'd anticipated, I discovered these foam boards, which are basically just little bits of foam sandwiched between two sheets of cardboard. And I basically thought, you know what, I reckon I could put these together, cut out different layers just to have, I didn't want it sticking high off the layout because I've got such limited space, it might look like it was on top of a cliff because there wasn't room or space to build up a slow mountain or hillside. But as you can see there, I just cut out pieces of those foam boards uh, painted it all green. In hindsight, I wish that I'd painted it um, brown, just a slightly darker base colour. Oh, sorry, I'm getting distracted here. So at this point, for the first time ever, I was going over all of the white corners of the cardboard building with a grey sharpie, just so that instead of having very sharp, clean white lines sticking out at every single corner on this building. We've now got, well, as you can see, far more subtle grayed outlines, which it doesn't uh, necessarily show up well on the camera, but in person, it looks so much better after doing that than just having the white lines on all the edges. So let me get back on track here. As you can see, I um, had some two millimeter grass here on this section, which I basically sprinkled on and all the rest of it. 
And the following day, after everything had dried, you can see I had a disaster. That the board had really, really curled up on each edge. So what I th the only thing I could think of doing was painting the underside of all these boards and then weighing it all down. And as you can see, weighing it down at every possible point I could here. Um, and then leaving it overnight to dry out. And amazingly, that actually pulled the cardboard back out straight and it now sits flush and flat on the layout again. So again, I was really in a bit of a panic when I saw how much it had all started to curl upwards with the moisture of the paint. But amazingly, like I say, painting the undersides to pull it all back down, it actually worked. And here you can see as I started putting the details in to cover up, obviously, all of these edges, all of the almost like an Ordnance Survey Explorer map, the orange contour lines of the hillside. Again, you can see the um, chief modelling cat here. Uh, as somebody said in a recent live stream, that static fear must have been a nightmare to put on. <laughs> but anyway, as you can see, the aim of the game from this point on was basically just to try and cover up all of the edges of these card sheets. And I'm amazed at how well it's all uh, worked and come together. So the little rocks that you can see there are uh, little cork pieces. They're not stone or anything like that. Just got a bag of tiny little cork fragments like that. I was thinking of maybe spraying them grey to start with. So they're more of a traditional rock colour. But I thought, you know what? I like the idea of them being more like a bit of sandstone. It's adding just a little bit of colour subtly into the layout instead of it all being grey and earthy colours. It's just a little bit more life and again... I don't know if it's just because of some of the places like right in 11 times and that where I've grown up traveling through and stuff. But I always associate sandstone with really old buildings and that, even though the church itself is a normal stone building. But you gather what I'm saying here. I just liked the effect and I thought, no, I'll just try it with those. And again, with the uh, nature of this sort of thing, if it hadn't have looked uh, all right, then I could have just peeled it off, sprayed them and then replaced them. So yeah, that's a good start of a few thoughts. Let's carry on. So looking at how this fits in with the layout, again, I'm pleased with how relatively seamless it all fits in. You might be able to tell that from this grass mat to there, there is a slight lightening up as it goes up there. I used some 6mm static grass on this section, which I don't think covered it as well as the 2mm grass, but those are all lessons learnt. And as I say, it's got that much life and stuff going on, you don't really notice it that much. But just as a temporary fix to help blend it in here, I've just put a few random trees and a lot of moss down. So obviously the layout, uh, the model church section ends about there and obviously just blends in with all this moss and stuff. So just a few random details and final thoughts here. You can see we've got sheep on the loose. Where on earth have they come from? Who knows? But they seem to find themselves all over the place. Got that little uh, muddy track that it looks like kids have made when they're scrambling about out playing. They've even there, can you believe it, put a little bit of fencing down so they can help get themselves up over that little piece of hill. Then we've got a chap here working, uh, putting a little bit more fencing up here. So he's um, going to stop those kids fun sooner or later when he gets to that area. Um, the thing I wasn't quite sure about was leaving the uh, poppies visible on the memorial there, as this is meant to be a mid-wars, a between-the-wars sort of area of the 1920s and 30s layout. But I thought it's just such a nice little piece, that, in the graveyard. Uh, I'll just leave it because, well, firstly, it's that time of year um, while I'm doing this and recording it. And secondly, I just think it's a great little touch, absolutely beautiful little touch. Um, these little paths here, obviously that one's not quite finished, are made out of a bit of sandpaper, a bit of grey sandpaper, and then just a little bit of chalk and uh, using the back of my tweezers just to scuff it up and make it look as if it's more, oops, sorry, I've stepped into the light there. Um, ironic as we're looking at a church, um, but I've scuffed it up to try and make it look like it's a worn dirt sort of gravelly track. And again, you can see the sheer amount of uh, fiddliness putting these graves in, as you can imagine. It, uh, it took a little bit of patience to do that. Again, I think that the lich gate, uh, cardboard lich gate there, mixed in with the 
actual proper uh, plaster of Paris wall, uh, that's a good effect. I think that works quite well. Again, you can see the uh, lights flickering on inside. I'm just, I do really just love the way this has all come together. Like I say, then covering up these edges of the cardboard here, because you've got so many contours coming down so quickly, putting so many pieces and so much moss and static grass strips and stuff, these general bushy bits in, it really has helped to make it look more of a gradual incline rather than the layered contoured cardboard sections. But ultimately, I've got to be honest, my friends, I am thoroughly pleased with the way that's gone. And I do definitely look forward to putting some of the things I've learnt into practice on uh, some of the next sections of layout. But really, I've got to say, I'm very, very pleased with that so far. Thank you so much for tuning in, my friends. I think I'll leave you in peace now and simply say, have an absolute... Oh, no, first, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. As you can see, I've got some good motivation and good work going on on the layout now compared to previous months. And uh, yeah, check the links in the description. You'll find my channel about life on a canal boat in the UK, sort of interesting, linked in the description, as well as books and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, where I post all sorts of pictures of things like this as I'm working on them. And oh yeah, until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting. Keep it loco worthy. Keep it boat worthy. And of course, my friends, have a fantastic day and farewell.